Yeah. Ow. Oh, God, my elbow. Oh, that was around my elbow. Oh. Ow. Okay. <sighs> Thanks, universe. Thank you for that. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while. Not for you. For you, it's... Hopefully, if I get this edited in time, it's been a month, which is what we're doing now. For me, it's been quite a while since I've picked up the camera, so hello. How's it going? Today is a video that I've... There's an aeroplane. I mean, the sun is... The, the sun is, like, gone behind the skyscrapers, so I might risk shutting... I'm gonna risk shutting the windows, because that's gonna get annoying. Hold on. So many windows! Today's video is one that I've been thinking about for a few weeks now, and that is how to dress for auditions. Because it can be very stressful, especially when you're first starting out, to know, like, what do you even wear? So, in this video, I'm going to be covering clothing, obviously. We need to wear clothes, otherwise we get arrested. But also a little bit of makeup and hair. Disclaimer, I am not an expert on any of these. I am not a makeup artist, I'm not a hairstylist, I am not a fashion person. This is just based on my own opinion, my process in deciding what to wear, and also from seeing and hearing stories of things. You can take it or leave it if you want. Also, another disclaimer, this is not gonna be a video of like, if you're playing this kind of character, then you should wear this, no. Every actor is different, every character, even if they're the same archetype, every character is slightly different. The world that they exist in, the type of play or the type of film or the type of show is going to be different. And each actor is going to have access to different things, different clothing, different hair, different skills when it comes to makeup and hair. So I'm not going to be telling you what to do. But hopefully this video will give you a way to make decisions about what to wear for your auditions if you're feeling stuck. So, with all that out of the way, let's get into the video. Before we get into nuts and bolts of how to decide what you're gonna do to like make yourself look right for the role, why is how you look important when you go into an audition? Because surely it's all about your performance, right? And yes, that is true. Your performance is the most important thing. You could look absolutely perfect for the role. If your performance is terrible, they're not gonna cast you. So you wanna, you wanna make sure the performance is good first. However, panels are human and humans make judgments based on how people look. And so if you walk in and you look completely wrong, your performance has to be so much better for them to be able to see you doing that part. So you might as well help yourself and come in looking kind of right, for want of a better word or a better phrase. So yes, how you look is important. You can't just look like you've rolled out of bed, unless that works for the character. Then look like you've rolled out of bed. But if your character is meant to be this put together, like type A CEO type person, <laughs> maybe don't look like you rolled out of bed. Especially if the scene is like in a boardroom. I'm gonna get my notes. I, yeah, I have notes by the way. Depending on the project, the importance of look is going to vary. So going from the most important to the least important, most important is commercials. If there's any type of casting where I would say, think about what you're gonna wear like really really soon after you get it through it would be it would be a commercial because if you don't look right they're just not gonna cast you even if you're amazing and you're not gonna really have a chance to show how amazing you are because it's gonna be like wow this chewing gum's amazing and that's your line and then you're done you know next down in importance i would say is anything else that screens so tv and film because you have less rehearsal time in tv and film and there's less like wiggle room to like explore what the character could be. They have a very clear idea of who the character is. So they want to see that both in how you perform it, but also in how you look, it's gonna help with that. Again, if you look completely off base, they're not gonna be able to see you as that character and they need to see you as that character kind of as soon as you walk in the room. And then least important is theatre. That's not to say how you look in a theatre audition isn't important, it totally is, but because with theatre there is a rehearsal process, 
there's space to explore the character together with you know the rest of the creative team and the other actors who are cast it doesn't have to be as hard and fast like you look perfect for the role and the other thing with theater is that if you have nothing that is right at all you can just go with neutral you can go drama school or black if you need to because that's not gonna be weird they'll like in theater they'll they'll understand what you're doing and it will give a blank canvas so they can just work with what you're performing and be like okay is that good or not with TV and film and with commercials I would advise against that just because on screen if you're in all black like that feels like a statement I don't think a panel for a TV or film audition would see you in all blacks as like oh it's a blank canvas that we can work with I think they'll see it as well this character wouldn't wear all black do you know what I mean but for theatre if you literally have nothing that's even remotely in the right ballpark which we'll get into, you probably do, you can always go down that route. So with that being said, let's talk first about clothing. What should you wear on your body? First thing you should do, and this kind of goes for clothing, makeup and hair, is think about the character. By this point, you should have read through your sides, read through any character descriptions, read the play if they've sent you the script or the show if they've sent you the script. and you should be thinking about who your character is, what kind of person are they, what is the scene specifically, is it set in their workplace, is it set on a date, is it set in their house and they're in their pyjamas, you know, things like that. Just to give you an indication of, okay, so how would a person like this dress and present themselves typically and then in this specific situation how might they present themselves. With this you can also think about things like is it set in a specific time period, are there kind of time period specific conventions that it would be useful to follow for example if it's something that's more period maybe set in the 30s 40s 50s it's more than likely that they'll be wearing hard shoes as opposed to trainers for example step number two is to then look at your own wardrobe look at all of those clothes and think if my character was given these clothes to choose from what would they choose to wear this is really good for two reasons firstly hopefully it means that you'll end up going in something that you're at least comfortable in we'll get into comfort in a sec but you know they're your clothes hopefully you like wearing them or you feel good in them to a certain extent so like you're not gonna go in anything that you're feeling like oh my god I, I feel so uncomfortable and weird and like I, I don't feel right secondly this stops you from wearing anything well hopefully <laughs> stops you from wearing anything too costumey a lot of times actors are given the advice of like dress as your character the issue with this can be if you go too far it doesn't feel like you're wearing clothes if that makes sense like if someone's wearing a costume if you think about like people dressing up for halloween or like Amdram shows where you know they've got this dusty old dress that they've hired from the National Theatre costume store or whatever and like you can tell that the people aren't comfortable in their clothes they don't feel lived in it doesn't feel like stuff that they wear every day and that can put a panel off because obviously for the character they wear these clothes every day they're their clothes so you don't want to start off on the wrong foot kind of physically and vibe wise by wearing things that don't feel like real clothes. Practical example with a type of character. Let's say you're being seen for the role of a doctor. The stereotype of a doctor is the lab coat with the stethoscope, right? If you went out and bought yourself a lab coat or you just happened to have one, I don't know, maybe you did like science at uni or maybe you just like owning lab coats, I don't know. You're probably not used to wearing a lab coat and it's so stereotypical that even if you physically feel comfortable, a panel's gonna look at you and be like, they've dressed up as a doctor. Whereas, if you were to go in something that, to be honest, most doctors actually wear, if you go to your GP or, you know, you go to the hospital, most of the doctors and nurses aren't wearing scrubs or lab coats, they're wearing normal clothes. So you could just go in some, like, dark non-distressed jeans or dark kind of chino type trousers or like a knee length skirt and just a nice blouse or top or shirt not a top something something that's kind of more formal for doc for doctors or something buttoned down if you wanted to hint that it's a doctor maybe if you've got a blue shirt that would be slightly better 
but you don't have to do the lab coat thing and going in dressed in smart work appropriate trousers and a button-up shirt you're gonna look like a doctor to the panel it's fine and you're probably gonna look less like you're wearing a costume because non-distressed dark wash jeans and a sh button-up shirt is not too out there like lots of people wear that on the daily it's like normal clothing right by looking at your own wardrobe and thinking about what your character would choose to wear from that you're less likely to fall into the trap of wearing something that feels like a costume number three is an avoid which i wanted to ironically avoid in this video but it kind of has to be said try and avoid anything with writing or really bold logos on it so like you don't want to be wearing graphic tees you don't want to be wearing like slogan tops when french connection was big back in the day and you could get t-shirts with fc uk on them like that wouldn't have been good the advice that i got at drama school was that you should also avoid patterns so avoid like stripes or anything like that in my experience like it can i think that's something you can compromise on if it's something really bold and distracting then maybe steer away from it but i've definitely worn clothes with patterns on to auditions like i have a black dress which you've probably seen from here up of in videos that's like black with white flowers on it i've worn that to auditions before it's a very simple non-distracting pattern and i think it's fine the reason for this is that you don't want the panel to be distracted how you look should enhance your portrayal of the character not distract from it so let's say for example you walk in wearing a led zeppelin t-shirt and you might think i like led zeppelin so i have this t-shirt and it's perfect for this character this character in my my interpretation is totally a led zeppelin fan the director might have a completely different idea and be like no they definitely wouldn't be into led zeppelin they'd be into pink floyd but not led zeppelin or they might just not like led zeppelin and then just be distracted by oh led zeppelin oh, i hate that band or like is it petty yeah but the director is human and they'll have a human reaction so like you just don't want to you don't want to give anyone any reasons to be distracted from what you're actually doing and then step number four is wear what you feel comfortable in now hopefully because you're choosing stuff from your own wardrobe everything's going to be comfortable anyway and you may find that because there's only really one thing that you can wear you're like okay i'm going with this now but if you have choice between multiple different options of what you could wear or if you have the one choice but you're like actually something more neutral or something that's not quite as specific i would feel more comfortable in go with that because if you feel uncomfortable that is going to come across in your audition and your performance and it's better that you feel comfortable and are maybe like slightly off than for you to be uncomfortable for example let's say you're being seen for a character um, a female presenting character and they're meant to be like sexy a femme fatale it would be better for you to go in something that you feel comfortable and still sexy in because i don't think you can really feel sexy if you don't feel comfortable um so something that you feel comfortable in that you can be like yes i can exude someone who knows that they're attractive and they know how to work with that rather than going for something that is really low cut or really short because that's what sexy women wear but you feel really uncomfortable because it's really low cut or really short and even though it's in your wardrobe because like you're happy to go clubbing in it in an audition you'd feel a bit self-conscious also i guess in this we can include like what's the weather doing at the moment it's really hot we're having kind of a heat wave situation in london even if my character i was like you know what they would wear they would wear skin tight leather trousers and a black turtleneck with long sleeves there is no way in hell i am wearing that to an audition today like right now that is not going to happen i will melt i'm not doing that to myself now if you really want to go all the way you could be like i'll take stuff to change into if you want to and you're able to but also like if you're not able to or you're like no it's just too hot even if i do change so i'm only in it for five minutes i will be sweltering and i like i'm not gonna be able to do a good performance because i'll just be so uncomfortable then don't find another solution once you've thought about everything and you've pulled your options think about what you would be comfortable in like what can you move in things like that because that's another thing that i actually forgot to mention in the beginning is like when you're thinking about what's in your audition like do you need to move is there a dance call is there a movement call because that's also going to affect 
how you're dressed. If you're having to do a full like jazz routine, you're probably not going to do that in a, you know, a really long skirt with a blouse. After you've got all of your options, what will be practical, what will be comfortable. And then step five, which is kind of its own mini kind of area within clothing is shoes. Shoes make such a big difference. If you if you have any experience of performing or like a lot of experience of performing, you will know how much costume in general, but particularly shoes. Like if I if I'm reading a character, I can usually tell instantly if that character's meant to be wearing heels and I'm like, nah, this character needs to be in heels. Yeah, so shoes are really important and also shoes can change the vibe of whatever you choose to wear so let's say you don't have anything that's particularly perfect for your character but you can imagine at some point they'd wear a white t-shirt and jeans and you have a white t-shirt and jeans but what you do with your shoes also hair and makeup we'll get to that but what you do with shoes can completely change that if you just picture in your mind's eye a person doesn't matter what gender in jeans and a t-shirt and you imagine that person in a jeans, t-shirt and heels, then in ballet flats, then in combat boots, then in trainers or vans or Nikes or whatever, then in hard shoes like Oxfords or Brogues. It gives a completely different vibe because the main kind of clothing is quite basic and neutral the choice of shoes completely changes it if you're struggling with like the clothing they would wear think about are there shoes that hint at what that would be if your characters are goth but you don't have goth clothes do you have black combat boots if you're going as an office worker but you don't have a suit do you have some formal shoes things like that ladies and female presenting folk who are auditioning for female presenting roles if you need to wear heels and you don't wear heels, put your hands up in the air, that is me. Character shoes are your best friend. If you're a dancer, you already know this. If you're not a dancer, go to a dance shop and ask for character shoes. I'll go get mine so you can see what they look like. Hang on. Oh, if I can find them. I think they're in here. Aha, they're over here. Hang on. <laughs> I'm a professional. Right. These are character shoes. They're not as hard as commercial shoes these have grips on them you can get grips on them if you need to these are a, i think a two and a half inch heel you can also get shorter ones which are called new yorkers which are about a one inch heel i killed mine in a show last summer these are the most comfortable heels you will ever wear because they're softer these are like round toed you can also get pointy toed ones they're just a great amazing go-to heeled shoe because they're dance shoes, you shouldn't wear them outside. I guess if you're not a dancer, you might not care about that. So if you want to look after after these shoes, it would be a case of like taking the shoes to the audition and then putting them on. But like, I'm happy to do that with a shoe if I need to. Seriously, worth the investment. If you're someone who doesn't feel comfortable in heels, but you're being seen for a character that has to wear a heel. So these are from So Dancer, but you can also go to Block. You can go to any any dance shop that sells dance attire they will have they will have these or look online so that's shoes let's get on to makeup now like i said i am not an expert in makeup but makeup if you wear makeup can be a really useful tool especially when it comes to things like aging yourself up and aging yourself down it can be a useful tool to kind of help them see you in the right age bracket the main rule in my opinion with makeup is again you don't want anything too distracting the fact of the matter is again panels are human and you don't want them to be distracted from your performance in any way everything should be enhancing not overpowering so you should be looking like your headshots which if you've done your headshots right you weren't overly made up anyway so then you shouldn't be more made up than your headshots significantly made up i should i should add because like you might want to wear a red lip for an audition and not have worn one in your headshots that's fine but like if you've contoured your face to high heaven and it looks like you have a completely different bone structure to your headshots then that's that's an issue don't do too much less is probably more but this depends because some people are like me and don't really wear a lot of makeup some people wear a lot of makeup and some people like it some people feel like they need to wear it whatever the reason so too much is going to have a different definition depending on what your comfort is with makeup to begin with so let's start with if you don't wear a lot of makeup i would suggest researching and maybe practicing 
kind of techniques that would suggest a character that wears more makeup. So practice doing simple eyeliner. Maybe you want to practice doing wings just so you know how to do them. Making sure that you have a lipstick shade, like just like a nice red lipstick that suits your complexion so that if you if you get a character and you're like you know what they'd have they'd have a red lip on you can put it on buying a simple neutral eyeshadow palette you don't have to buy expensive makeup you don't have to buy loads of things like I have eyebrow gel if you like your eyebrows or you're not fussed about your eyebrows or whatever you don't need eyebrow gel you don't need contour you don't need highlighter if you want to choose between brush blusher or bronzer you could probably choose one or the other do you gravitate to looking more glowy or looking like more kind of fresh faced then pick one yeah you don't need a lot of stuff you don't need lip liner <laughs> you don't need a lot of stuff but just researching what like the absolute basics of like a simple face of makeup that looks like you've put something on because to be honest it's unlikely you're gonna have to do a full beat in an audition in fact I would advise against doing a full beat in an audition you don't need to and just you know having some mascara some basic eyeliner and a red lip is going to give the effect of this is a person who wears makeup they make themselves up every day that's all you need if you're someone who wears a lot of makeup I would suggest experimenting with what happens if you wear less makeup I think even if you decide not to do it for auditions I would my instinct again I'm not an expert and I'm not here to tell you what to do with your life but I think it would be interesting for you to explore what it would be like doing a performance with no makeup at all doing it completely barefaced I don't think it's necessary I definitely pre-covid I always wore makeup to auditions and when I used to wear makeup all the time for auditions it was part of the ritual almost of like I'm going into an audition it's a professional thing I want to put on makeup so I feel like I'm performing so I'm not saying you have to be okay going into audition barefaced but I think experimenting with what it feels like to perform a monologue or to perform a song with no makeup on and also experimenting with makeup techniques that look a bit more no makeup makeup what happens if you do a face without doing your eyebrows what happens if you do a face without putting on an eyeliner what happens when you take away certain elements so it gives a more bare face look especially if you're being seen for characters that are maybe younger or you're being seen for characters that just for whatever reason you're casting the stereotype or the archetype isn't a fully made up face and then in terms of the less is more if you're someone who wears a lot of makeup I would skew to what your daily is is like the wabam this is this character is like fully made up and then anything that's less than that tone your your daily or what you're comfortable or happy with tone it down also if you're someone who wears a lot of makeup you're probably going to be more comfortable with this anyway but you can really get to exploring different styles of makeup makeup from different eras because the advantage as someone who really likes makeup and really likes wearing makeup is that you're probably going to have so much more fun experimenting with those different looks and you're going to be able to execute them so so well that's the advantage you have so absolutely use that advantage finally let's get on to hair which again can make a really big difference in the overall look that you're trying to achieve for the character you're portraying. Again, the first step is to think about how would this character do their hair, both in general and in the specific situation. Are they kind of a pulled back bun, very practical, get it out of my face, I'm focusing? Or are they like hair out, carefree, easy breezy, like just vibing? And then again, like with makeup, experiment with how doing your hair in different ways changes how you look I find for me personally because I am quite you know I am kind of baby faced a little bit hair makes such a big difference on how mature or not I look so for me like at the moment my hair is like in a top bun but it's like quite loose I don't have like it's not slicked back at all I don't really know if this makes me look younger or older I just wanted it out of the way but if I do my hair in plaits like if I do my hair in plaits or in bunches 
automatically look younger. And then obviously, you know, having your hair out, having your hair in a high bun versus a low bun, a slip back bun versus a messy bun for our longer haired people. If your hair's even longer, there's so much you can do, like long plaits or like half up, half down. Just experiment with doing your hair in different ways and how does it change things. Even if you have shorter hair, so maybe like up versus down isn't an option, it's just there. You can experiment with how much product you use in your hair. Like if you're using a really hard hold gel, that's gonna look completely different to if you just like wash your hair and put no product in it. It's gonna look fluffier versus more controlled, you know, and then this is more kind of a general thing that you can't change casting by casting, but if you have hair on the shorter side, you can still experiment with what do I tend to be seen for? What does that hair usually look like? Do I get seen for characters that are maybe more like beach bros? Then you might want to grow your hair a little bit long and not have as controlled hairstyles on the daily and get used to how it looks like that. If you tend to be more like, you know, the kind of characters with short back and sides, then, you know, work with short back and sides and experiment how that can be changed and altered. Same goes for facial hair. Uh, if you grow facial hair, that can make a huge difference being clean shaven to having a full beard to having just a mustache to having a goatee. Experiment with those different things and how they change your face so that if you're in the situation where you've got an audition in two weeks and you think, oh, this character would have a full beard and you're in a position where you can grow it out, like you're not in a show where you have to be clean shaven or anything, you can make those informed decisions for yourself. Whilst we're on the subject of hair, I do want to touch on textured hair. So wavy, curly, coily, afro hair, because that can also be a decision that you make. The main one I'm thinking about is obviously leaving your hair curly or natural, versus straightening your hair. And also to be fair, the other way, if your hair is naturally on the straighter side, do you wanna choose to curl it with a curling wand? And then when we go to afro hair, kinky coily hair, there's protective styles like box braids, twists, weaves, you've got the option of wigs if you wear wigs, you've got other natural states of your hair like wearing locks or dreads, and then you've just got like afro out in all its glory. And all of those styles come with interpretations from culture, positive and negative. And that's why I wanna talk about this because I think it is important to touch on. I have curly hair, I don't have afro hair, so I can't speak from personal experience, but I know how contentious it is. And even for people who aren't of Afro-Caribbean descent, even if you're white and you have textured hair, there can still be that pressure to be like, straight hair is more professional, for example, which is BS, but it's something that you might be on audition panels where they think that way. It's up to you what you want to do with all of that knowledge of how your hair might be perceived when it comes to its texture, natural or not. You might be in a position where it's like, it has no emotional baggage for you. You might be, especially if you're not a person of color, just be like, yeah, I've embraced my natural waves and like, I love a beachy look, but also pin straight, I'm fine. Like, it makes no difference to me. And you might even be a person of color and not have an issue with straightening your hair. Like, it might not be a big emotional thing for you. You're just like, hey, it's just changing up my look. I really don't give a shit. And that's fine. If it's something where it does affect you emotionally, the thought of, I feel like this character would have straight hair or straightened hair because they're a professional and I don't like that. Or I think the panel is gonna think she should have straight hair or he should have straight hair and I don't feel comfortable with that. That's the decision you have to make. And it, it can be on a case by case basis. I'm not saying that you have to be like, absolutely going natural hair all the way or I'm gonna straighten my hair. You can decide you know, when my hair's in protective style, I'm not gonna worry about it because the health of my hair is more important. It could just be on what you're comfortable doing. So for example, I haven't straightened my hair since like 2016, 2017. I never straighten my hair. I wear it natural because I'm lazy and I can't be asked. So if an audition came through, I probably wouldn't consider straightening my hair because I do it so infrequently. I, it would just be an extra stress and a headache and I don't wanna deal with that. And I don't own like a straight wig, for example, to like whack on instead and you know. I would just be like, well, they're gonna see my natural hair. If this character had my hair, how would they do it? And if they can't see past the curls, that's their problem. You might decide, no, I, I wanna give myself the best shot possible. And if they 
are gonna think that they should have straight hair, the character should have straight hair, I'm going to go with a straight hairstyle. And that's completely up to you, there's no right or wrong answer, whatever you decide to do is valid. I would say, however, make sure you're making an informed decision and that even if you do decide to, you know, straighten your hair for a role because you think that's how society would make that character look, if you have textured hair naturally, like, make sure you really look after yourself with that decision, whatever the decision is, and that you you work through those emotions in a healthy way and don't just let them fester because that's not good and your health and your mental health are more important than a job. But it is something I did want to touch on because it is something that in society still there are preconceived notions of what hair is professional or what hair is put together or what hair is beautiful versus what hair or hairstyles aren't. So um, yes. But to end this section on a high note, hair is a really, really useful tool, especially when you're wanting to, you know, add an extra touch of character when your clothes can't really do it or just, you know, give it some extra oomph. So experiment with your hair, how you're comfortable wearing it and how you can change how you wear it in order to give different effects. I'm very sweaty guys, it's very warm. So that was my video on what to wear for auditions. I hope that you found it helpful and informative. What do you tend to wear to your auditions? Do you tend to have a one go-to outfit that you always seem to gravitate towards? Or do you just spend hours like trawling through your wardrobe being like what do I wear for this let me know in the comments if you did enjoy this video please consider liking and subscribing would love to have you on the channel come on down we have a great time wearing clothes even though it's too hot to wear clothes <laughs> stay tuned for more theatre content from a UK perspective and I will see you all in my next video bye friends <laughs>